Welcome back to Face the State on this Sunday morning. The town of Newtown is very much on our minds this week after the suicide of Jeremy Richmond, the father of Aviel Richmond, who died in Sandy Hook. With us today, someone who's been through this, JT Lewis, a previous guest on Face the State. He's from Newtown and the brother of Jesse Lewis, who also died at Sandy Hook. And JT, thanks for being with us here. Thank you for having me. Today. I know we're going to talk about school safety in just a moment, but I just wanted to get your thoughts. What is your message to family members of Sandy Hook victims on a day like today? What do you say? How do you get through it? Yeah, well, I talked about it earlier this week. And, you did. Uh, it's, it's things that you don't really think about that are going to trigger uh, something like that uh, and bring back all those memories. And I know a lot of the families are struggling with that. And so it's something that, uh, as a community, we have to look out for. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't have the answers. Um, I don't know how to prevent something like that. But what I can say is just do your best to um, be loving to the families. It's, it's not easy. And the whole community is affected, but especially the families. And you know, at this point, I didn't really know Jeremy personally, but we're all part of a big family, that group of everyone who's lost kids there. So it's, it's, it's a tough situation. How painful is every day? Every day is pretty painful, um, so I, I know exactly what Jeremy was going through, and uh, that's why I can feel for him so much. You've made it your mission to make schools safer, and you say they're not safe right now. No, at this point, most schools are not safe. That's correct. And we learned a lot of this from a federal report. What did you learn out of that report? Yeah, well, so we, we were on the commission uh, for school safety with Secretary DeVos over the summer, uh, and I was able to go in and testify uh, what my thoughts were. And basically what I said was, uh, at least at Sandy Hook, and this is a similar uh, thing that's happening across the country, what happened that day was the shooter shot out the front glass doors, walked in, and killed 26 people. It was that easy. There was no one to confront him at the entrance. The entrance was easily accessible to him. So my thought was we can go back and we can look at it and say, here's what we can do. We can have single entry points. So there's one entrance to the school. And this is already being done. And I'll tell you what, Newtown, after that happened, immediately updated the security in all the schools. We have guards, we have single entry points, we have cameras. So we need a single entry point and then an armed guard right there to confront any shooter that comes in. You want armed guards in every school? Absolutely. And look, they're, they're highly trained. They're former police and military. I've even floated the idea of having current police and, and uh, you know, active police in schools. Instead of having them on patrol, just have them located in the schools. And actually, that's already happening at Newtown High School. We have a, uh, a satellite police station, if you will, in the, in the school. What do you say to those who say that, that there's no place for a gun anywhere on campus, even if it's with an armed guard? Well, if it's not with the armed guard, then it's with the shooter, right? That's how I look at it. And unfortunately, these incidents are happening uh, pretty frequently. And at this point, we do have to, we have a gun control debate and we have a school safety debate. And we have to look at the facts and one of them is not working at this point. And so it's time to shift focus. That's how I look at it. How do you feel about armed teachers? Yeah, I'm not supportive of armed teachers. I know the, uh, actually when we were with the president um, in a private moment, he was talking about uh, the, the, uh, why people are against armed teachers and, and the media makes it sound like he just wants to give, you know, Miss blah, 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 the art teacher a gun. But it's really, it's highly trained teachers who go through hundreds of hours of training. But again, I'm not supportive of it, but I'm just as devil's advocate. You have a different view of schools than most people have because of your experience and your loss. Right. When you drive by a school, do you find yourself looking at it saying, well, that just shouldn't be? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's hard to you know, look at schools where my cousins go or my young friends go. You look for the safety features and the absolutely, lack of them? Absolutely, yeah. No, it's, it, in Newtown, uh, obviously, we now have the safest schools in the country, I could say. But in, in schools outside of there, they, they aren't addressing those external safety measures yet. And uh, that's unfortunate. And, um, you see different uh, cases where um, they are starting to uh, address this and they're starting to add guards and they're starting to add single entry points. Uh, and it is a movement that has taken off really since Parkland. We started to look at this other option of school safety and what we can do to make school, to harden schools. Uh, and so that, that is productive and I'm glad that I got to be a part of that. You're at UConn, do you think it's a safe campus as you walk around it and sit in classrooms? Yeah, you know, I thought about that honestly. I went to a, uh, a UConn hockey game and you know I had the metal detectors and I was patted down and then led into the stadium and it was a really safe process and I walk around on campus and you know there's just people walking around you know you walk into class it's it would be a really hard it's hard to secure a college campus but um, that's totally different when it comes to schools mm -hmm. uh, which is what I'm focusing on I'm not really looking at colleges right now that's a whole different story I carry a bulletproof backpack because I know it's a serious problem that we have to address. 
as you work with this commission, what kind of things are you hoping to accomplish? Yeah, well, so the final report has been released. That's what we were at the event with the president. Um, and that's great. And they, they actually, uh, if you want to look at it, they um, included number one in the report, my mom's program and what she's doing with SEL. And just Jesse, refresh us on that. Just Right, the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Movement, which is now over a million kids uh, in 64 countries, really taking off. It's social and emotional learning. Uh, so I'm encouraging all the viewers to go look at that because that's just an amazing uh, program. And so while I'm focusing on external safety, hardening the schools, she's focusing on the internal safety, which is teaching kids mm -hmm. to choose love and get along. And, and what's the number one th recommendation of this report? Well, that was it. That was That's so the number one thing. That was the first thing in the report. And then it got into different things like guards. And, yeah. and it's, it's over 100 recommendations. And at this point, well, what you've seen happen is with the Stop School Violence Act, and the, that combined with this report, states now have funding and imp, uh, implementable ideas. So at this point, it's up to governors across the country. And I keep saying that the, the federal, the president, the federal government has done everything it can at this point. Now it's up to governors to make schools safe. How hard was it to be on this commission? Did it bring back a lot of memories? And it absolutely did. Um, I gave about a 15 or 20 minute. Uh, I testified for 15 or 20 minutes. I remember in, in that yeah. big room. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I told some, some stories that definitely brought back some memories, but um, it was worth it. I, I told about what happened in the class that mm -hmm. day when I was in lockdown and had no idea what was going on and then ended up at the firehouse. And I told that story and then I, I said, here's how we can make sure it doesn't happen again. JT Lewis. And they we, listened. We always thank you for your insight. Best thank of you. luck. Thank you. Forty-five years ago this weekend, one of our top stories was communism. The Catholic Church in Connecticut was concerned about it. So we sat down with the then Archbishop of Hartford, John Whelan, and he had this to say. I think it's very difficult to typify communism. Some of communism is uh, atheistic. Uh, it tries to root out religion. And uh, that type of communism, definitely, we, we cannot tolerate. Now, to put this into perspective, this was March of 1974. Just a couple of months later, President Richard Nixon would travel to the Soviet Union for that historic summit with Russian Premier Leonid Brezhnev. But communism and the Soviet Union didn't fall until about 15 years later in 1989. That's from our archives from 1974. We thank you for watching Face the State on this Sunday morning. April's tomorrow, and that's no fooling. Have a great Sunday, everybody.